So in harvesting things like parsley, their stems are fairly soft. You could use the scissors or something like that, but I find that I'm usually able to just pinch and snap. And I'm just trying to pick around my kitty cat kind of all the outside leaves of the plant. You gotta move a little bit. Um, so that there's still some left in the heart of the plant to grow. It's probably not going to do much more growing at this time of year anyway. And this is the first I'm harvesting any other than some to use fresh this year. If I'd got these planters planted a little earlier, uh, normally I can pick a lot midsummer and then still have a lot more to pick at this time of year, but these plants just didn't have that much time to grow. So, I'm picking a bunch now. Parsley is an herb that I use a good bit of in cooking, and so I like having plenty of it dried to use because it's so much fresher than anything you can buy. And very easy, as you can see. I'm gonna just harvest a bunch of the leaves off several of the plants growing right around the house here, and then uh, if there's one that Either it's a little yellow or that one's just so dirty and I don't feel like cleaning up. It was just kind of beat into the, the soil by the last rain we had. Um, I just leave them to mulch the top surface of this planter around the house. And we're leaving a bunch of stalks there though. It's probably not going to do a lot more growing this year. Some herbs are a lot, have a lot thicker stems like this oregano. I have several varieties of oregano go growing. This is actually blooming. Most ideally for cooking, it's probably a good idea to cut it before it's blooming. But it blooms beautifully and pollinators love this stuff. And it also, if you cut it at this stage, it makes a lovely dried flower too. And I'm still going to use it in cooking because I didn't get it picked earlier when I should have. I'm doing the same thing, just kind of clipping the stems close, you know, kind of taking it down to a short bush, um, but leaving enough growth that if the plant has time to do some more growing this year, it can. Sometimes oregano lives through the winter for me. Not every plant makes it, but I want to leave it enough stem and, uh, you know, plant that it has a, a chance to. This one is so inspired. That's one of the oregano's. So this stuff flopping over down here is another variety of oregano. In our berry berm, here in our berry berm bed between the edge or by the edge of the garden, um, kind of under the berry bushes and such, I have a good bit of mint growing, various varieties. Um, this is peppermint. This has been cut quite a few times this year already to just make fresh tea and iced tea and so on with that. Um, I think I've done videos in the past on all those if you check them out under tiny house cooking. It smells so wonderful as you cut this stuff, but I also like having a bunch dry to enjoy through the winter once this is not growing out here fresh anymore. And had this patch not been cut so many times, more of the stalks would be like that one um, trying to bloom, which is also beautiful. Several of the patches I've let more just go to blooming, but this one has been cut for a lot of teas further down the edge of that same bed of spearmint, which has also been cut quite a few times in between more of the other herbs and strawberries and currant berry bushes. And it's just 
doing exactly what I wanted and filling in all the little holes here so that other than this front edge, which I still have to finish getting all the grass out of, it is making a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful um, ground cover. That is not only lovely, the pollinators all love it when it blooms, but we've made a lot of fresh teas out of this and I'm going to make a lot more through the winter with what I'm cutting right now. Now what I'm going to do with all these that I picked are just like I've showed you guys before for a whole lot of things. Oh, hi kitty. Um, I'm going to make little bunches. The size of the bunch is not real important. It just, you want there to be enough air movement around whatever you've got that it isn't going to, uh, it's going to dry before it molds. So while I could probably make a bigger bunch, I'm going to do something like that. I'm getting the, the stem ends approximately lined up, and I'm going to do my rubber band thing like I've showed you before. If you don't know how to do that, go check out like the garlic video. And then I've got this nice little bunch of, that one's spearmint. But I'm going to do the same thing with oregano. Um, and again, I'm just trying to make sure that the, the ends of my stems are approximately lined up so that the rubber band catches them all so they're not falling out on the floor as they dry. And those are longer and branchier, so I think I can do all of that variety in one, one bunch. And then when I hang these, I'm going to kind of spread them out a little bit like that so that they are not, you know, squished together like this so that as much air movement as possible gets around all this stuff. And then I'm simply going to hang them in the shop where it stays nice and dry. Uh, up in the attic actually is the plan. It was part of the plan when we originally built it. They would have a, a hot dry attic with rafters that I could put nails on and hang a whole bunch of stuff like this to dry every year. No electricity required, none of that. Any warm dry place will work. I know some people will do it uh, from a um, uh, on the, you know, dash of a car. I try to do it somewhere out of the sunshine. I think it help keeps, helps keep the, the color and therefore the nutrients in the herbs a little bit better. Um, you can do a, a dry attic in a shop, over a house, in a garage. I've seen stuff dried well in all those places. Even an open shed like the lean-to where the garlic is currently curing would work pretty well. Um, but we're getting some pretty cool nights. So I know this stuff is going to stay dry if I put it up in the top of the attic uh, of the shop where it's uninsulated and therefore it gets really hot every time the sun shines, even when it's really cold outside. So I'm going to bunch up the rest of this and we're going to go hang it. So again, how I'm doing that, you have seen this before, hook a rubber band over a single stem, though parsley is pretty fragile, so one stem is often too little. So I do a couple go the whole way around with my rubber band, hook it over a couple more. Super easy, and then your stuff doesn't fall out uh, as it dries and the stems shrink together and fall on the floor. Now if you don't have a hot attic in your shop to uh, hang stuff in, when I only had the tiny house space, I if you go back and look at old videos and old pictures and stuff, you'll see I just hung things from the edges of the bookshelves and the coat rack inside the door and stuff like that until it dried. Uh, when I lived in an apartment in town with a friend, I and we grew stuff on our little teeny patio, a couple square feet. I would hang things to dry in the garage that was attached to that place. So you really can do this kind of anywhere with anything. The main goal is to hopefully not have all of your stuff fall on the floor of wherever, hence using the rubber band so they, you know, tighten up as the stems dry and therefore shrink 
and to uh, get pretty good air circulation around it so it actually dries rather than molds. So if you're in a more humid climate and you're concerned about that, just make smaller bunches. They will dry quicker. Um, and you get a feel for this after a bit. I used to work at a place that did a lot of dried flowers, so we dried literally truckloads and truckloads of a lot of things. A lot of these same things, dried, dried mint is beautiful in flower arrangements, uh, even if you're not eating it. Um, dried oregano is very beautiful. We grew that just for flower arranging and so on. So you can do this with all kinds of stuff and it works when you dry that much of it you get a little bit of a feel for you know how moist each kind of plant is and how long the stems are how dense they are and you just get kind of an idea of how much you want to put in a single bunch but this works and here in just a second i think i got one more bunch of parsley that one's peppermint you can kind of see how the peppermint's a little darker than the, the spearmint they look very similar but their flavors and scents are different and um, we're gonna go hang these up That's the last bunch of parsley and i see i've got a few stragglers of like an oregano so I can go back and just stick one more end into that rubber band and a few more stragglers of mint I might just make a cup of mint tea this evening with that there's my extra rubber bands okay we're going inside a little harder when you have no room for the backswing because of the next rafter being in the way. But anyway, eventually probably this whole attic is going to have little nails like that stuck in it. But once you have something like that, this is what I wanted this attic space for. It was, you know, up where my head's almost touching the rafters, but I can walk around until I get down there to the eaves. And this isn't a space Clay was planning to use for anything, so this is what I'm going to do. This place stays hot and dry. It's not insulated up here. So now I just take my bunches of herbs and I just stick them on a nail and they will just be here. It already smells lovely like mint and parsley and oregano and all that. I've got a lot more to do, but I just didn't have time to film all of it but see what i mean i'm kind of just using my hand to spread the bunch out rather than mash it together and i settle it down over a nail and they'll be right here drying they're out of any direct sunlight because there's no windows up here in the attic so they don't get um you know bleached out so they could just hang here until i want to use them but at some point once i don't have so many outside projects to do anymore. I will probably take them down and uh, crumble all the dried leaves off into a jar to be handier to get. But that's how easy it is to hang stuff to dry. Like I said, you can do this in all kinds of places, but if you have any kind of garage, shop, barn, something with rafters up high like this, this is a really good spot for drying things. We hope you enjoyed it. Come back next time for more adventures. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.